Real Property Gains Tax. This topic is very popular in the final exam for ATX Malaysia variant. Now, for this topic, generally, we will start off by looking at the scope of charge. Then, we will look at the basis period for real property gains tax. Then, we'll look at a few terms. Acquisition. Disposal. Acquisition debt, which we will have to determine. Your disposal debt, which you will also have to determine. Why? Because when it comes to real property gains tax rate, it will be based on the holding period. So you will have to compare your disposal debt with your acquisition debt. Then you will have to see how long is the holding period. Then only you will go to the RPGT tax rate table, read off how much will be the tax rate. Then next, we will learn how to determine acquisition price, disposal price. So this will be important because this will form part of your tax computation for real property gains tax purposes. Then, once we finish off with that, we will learn two specific exemptions. One is under Schedule 3 exemption. So this is what we call private residence exemption. Then we'll learn another one called Schedule 4 exemption. This Schedule 4 exemption generally will be for individual so there will be formula for you to apply. And then we will look at other kind of scenario like option, lease. Under what circumstances a lease will constitute a chargeable asset subject to RPGT. Then we will look at circumstances that give rise to no gain, no loss transaction. Where in this kind of situation, you'll find that the donor will have no real property gains tax. So you have to look at the impact on the donor and the impact on the recipient, basically the tax implication. And one more item that we'll be learning after that will be something called real property company. Which in short, we generally call as RPC. We will learn how to determine when will a company be a real property company. Why? Because if a person own real property company shares, then upon disposal of this share, this real property company share, or we call RPC share, is a chargeable asset. So the gain from the disposal will be subject to real property gains tax. And lastly, we will look at the tax administration part. Basically, when to submit a return, what will be the requirement expected or that the acquirer or the disposer have to comply with. Then how about the time bar, the raising of notice of assessment. So basically, the whole of the RPGD topic, this will be what we will be learning. So now, RPGT, remember, it is no longer under Income Tax Act. Real Property Gains Tax has its own act, Real Property Gains Tax Act. 
and generally RPGT will be imposed on chargeable gain from disposal of chargeable asset situated in Malaysia. So generally RPGT is on territorial scope. It is only for disposal of real property situated in Malaysia. If the property is situated outside Malaysia, then there will be no real property gains tax in Malaysia. Then, next is that, always remember this, RPGT and income tax are mutually exclusive. So basically, it means that if gain from disposal of a real property is already subject to RPGT, it will not be subject to another round of income tax. Likewise, it again is already subject to income tax, it will not be subject to real property gains tax again. But of course, there are also circumstances whereby the gain is subject to real property gains tax and the inner robot, the tax authority actually withdraw the RPGT assessment and tax the gain under income tax. Basis period for real property gains tax. You learn under your income tax. Income tax Your basis period for your assessment, generally, if you're talking about individual, it will be on calendar year basis. So that calendar year, 1st January to 31st December of that year, will constitute the basis period for your assessment. So say, for example, if we are talking about YA 2020, so calendar year means it will start from 1st January 2020 until 31st December 2020. So for company, our basis period for your assessment will generally follow your financial year end. So it say my financial year end is 30th June. So for YA 2020, our basis period for YA 2020, 30th of June means it will end 30th of June 2020, close 30th of June 2020. 12 months, it will start from 1st July 2019. That is for income tax. But for real property gain tax, our basis period For a year of assessment will always be based on the calendar year. First January of the year to 31st December. Whether it's individual or company. Say so other words. If a person disposes of real property anytime between first January 2020 to 31st December 2020, when you work the tax computation, this will constitute YA 2020. So say for example, we tell you that a company year end thirty of September. Then Say this company disposed a real property on 12th October 2020. If you are working for RPGT purposes, this will be YA 2020 because we are based on calendar year basis. But if you are working on income tax computation, 30th September year end, 12 October 2020, income tax purposes, this will constitute YA 2021. So you have to be very careful with this because in a final exam, if you write the wrong YA, generally you will lose your marks. Then, a few terms here. 
acquisition means acquire, purchase, grant, exchange, give, settlement, etc. Basically, very simple. If the real property generally has changed name to that particular taxpayer, then the taxpayer deem to acquire. Disposal will be by what? Sell, transfer, or sign, whether by agreement or by force of law. So as long as the property is no longer in that person's name, deem disposed of. And when it comes to real property gain tax, remember, RPGT is charged on chargeable gain from disposal of chargeable asset. So what will give you this chargeable gain? You will learn later on acquisition price, disposal price. So you'll find that we will make a gain when our disposal price is greater than acquisition price. So no doubt, if your disposal price is less than acquisition price, we will make a, a liable loss. If it's greater, it will be called chargeable gain. So this is the gain which will be subject to RPGT. What if your disposal price is the same as your acquisition price? So you will get a situation called no gain, no loss. So this is something that we'll learn subsequently. No gain, no loss. Where your acquisition price and your disposal price will be the same. Then who is chargeable person? Every person, whether resident or not. Every person. Company, individual, partnership, limited liability partnership, every person. What will constitute chargeable asset? Real property, including vacant land, real property company share, which I wrote just now. Lease, which will be a topic that we'll learn under our ATX Malaysia slippers. Acquisition debt, disposal debt. First situation, when you get the exam question, look at the question. Is the agreement? If there is agreement, very simple. We will always adopt the agreement that. Only when there's no agreement, then you will have to determine. If there's no agreement, then your disposal debt will be the debt of transfer ownership or the debt where the whole money contract is received by the disposal, whichever is earlier. And don't forget, your disposal debt will coincide with your acquisition debt. So you only have to determine one of them. So say I am disposing, you are acquiring. So our debt will be the same debt. My disposal debt will also be your acquisition debt. Then if a company were to transfer fixed asset into stock for RPGT purposes, this is deemed disposal of a chargeable asset. So you say you have a piece of land, it was put under fixed asset. Subsequently, you reclassify it into current asset, your stock. For RPGT purposes, this is deemed disposal of chargeable asset. It will attract RPGT. So the disposal debt will be the debt of reclassification. Conditional contract, this one once in a while, will come in in your final exam. Conditional contract means that we have a sales and purchase agreement. But the sales and purchase agreement are signed by the acquirer and the disposer, but pending certain conditions to be fulfilled or certain approval to be obtained. So basically, approval here means obtained from the government or state government. So if such kind of circumstances, then our deem disposal debt or acquisition debt will be the debt where the condition has been satisfied or approval from the government or state government have been obtained. 
so we will not follow the agreement there. So this approval here will be from the government. Or the state government or any relevant authorities. Acquisition price and disposal price are important because this will be reflected in your tax computation. Not only that, your disposal debt, acquisition debt, also you have to reflect in your tax computation because you have to determine what is the holding period to get your RPGT tax rate. So once we have looked at your disposal price, acquisition price, then we'll look at how to prepare a RPGT tax computation. Then we'll learn how to read the RPGT tax rate from the table given in the exam. Acquisition price is based on formula. It will be consideration pack you're buying so you have to pay a sum of money plus incidental cost. So these two out outflow, we are paying a consideration to buy the property, we incurred incidental cost. So these two are, are outflow, that's why we will add them together. Then you will minus out recoveries. Recovery will be an inflow, an income, so we minus out. So some example of your incidental cost will be brokerage fee or sometimes we call it commission, professional fee, legal fee. So professional fee here could be to the tax agent, could be to the valuer. So those are the professional fee. Stamp duty, you have to sign sales and purchase agreement. So have to pay stamp duty. Legal fee here will be for your sales and purchase agreement. Then advertising. Sometimes we want to acquire property. We might want to do some advertising to look for seller. So that one will be your incidental cost, which will form part of your acquisition price. Recoveries will come from compensation received for damage to a real property from any person. Or maybe it can come from the insurance company. It will also include deposit forfeited for aborted disposal of the real property. So this one will be a situation whereby, say I intend to dispose of my real property. Then a potential buyer is interested in purchasing my property. So that potential buyer put a deposit with me. Subsequently, that potential buyer is not able to fulfill, so forfeited the intended purchase, so that the project is forfeited. So that to me is a recovery. So it will go into my acquisition price formula, but because it's an inflow, so you minus out. Disposal price will be consideration received, you are selling, so you receive money, this is an inflow. Of course, the acquisition price, we also have incidental cost. This is an outflow. So different sign, you minus out. We will also minus out some permitted expenses. So in the exam, all of these, you have to determine yourself and you have to determine properly as to whether, especially incidental cost. You look at the incidental cost in acquisition and disposal, they are basically similar type of expenses. So exam, you have to identify clearly if you see professional fee or legal fee or advertisement. Is this for acquisition or disposal? You have to put them at the correct stage only. You will earn your full mark. If you put at the wrong stage, then basically no marks. Then what will be permitted expenses? It will include two things here. Capital expenditure, so it must be only capital expenditure here. Or real property to enhance, preserve the value of the real property. That means after uh, I acquire the real property, what are the capital expenditure that I incurred? So eventually I can enhance the value of the property when I sell off in the future, or at least preserve the value. So it'll be things like maybe renovation, 
these are capital expenditure, extension. Then don't forget if you acquire a piece of land, subsequently you construct building on top of the land. That is also capital expenditure. Then next you also include expenditure on real property to establish, preserve, defend title or right or order real property. So example here that you will see in the exam will be more towards legal fee. But you will also see the word defend title or right. Schedule 3 exemption. Generally, this will be for individual. Schedule 4 exemption also for individual. Schedule 3 exemption, sometimes we call this as private residence exemption. And this is a once in a lifetime exemption given to individuals. But the individual here, we are only talking about Malaysian citizen and permanent resident of Malaysia. So non-Malaysian citizen not entitled to this exemption. And this exemption, since it's called private residence exemption, means it's only for residential property, which will be occupied by the individual or rented out. And since this is a once in a lifetime exemption, means an individual can only elect for this exemption once in a lifetime. So of course, one of the condition is that the individual has never elected before. So if the individual wants to go for this exemption, individual will have to make irrevocable election. In a prescribed form. Schedule for exemption, on the other hand, this will go into your tax computation. It will be reflected in the tax computation, means you have to claim it in the tax computation. Schedule 3 exemption is more of theoretical. So if in the final exam you get this part, it's more of theoretical scenario. Schedule 4 exemption will be reflected in your tax computation to claim that. How does the exemption work? 10,000 or 10% of chargeable gain? whichever is higher. And the individual here will be for natural person. So it does not matter whether Malaysian citizen, non-Malaysian citizen will be entitled to this Schedule 4 exemption. However, if there is part disposal of land, then you will have to adjust the Schedule 4 exemption using the following formula.